through a miracle, a miracle today. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Destiny changer. I'm so glad to be here today. I was hoping that uh, the bishop would come and lay his hands on me and pray for me and release the word so that I can speak with confidence. But I think he prayed in the house and prayed in the... <laughs> you know, sometimes you never really get used to this pulpit. And one of the things today, I just don't feel like very confident. But I thank God that the Spirit of the Lord is the one that gives us confidence. Amen? And as I come to you this morning, I just want to say that uh, I love you all. Amen? And it's a beautiful day, and I thank God that my sermon was already preached. When Bishop stood here and said, God is going to snatch somebody from their distraction, I said, finished. Because that was the verse that I was going to preach about. <laughs> amen? And I said, amen, Lord, you have confirmed the word. And the connection is just wonderful. Amen? We did not share this before we came. So he did not read my notes unless Ali Angalia Sazile Napitia. But I thank God for that confirmation. I am going to speak to you today and I pray that I can speak very shortly so that you do not doze off and you shall not doze off in Jesus' name. Because I'm going to give you keys that are going to deliver you forever. I'm going to hunt to you tools that you will need to live your life from today onwards, never being the same again. I decree and declare that the word that I'm going to speak into your lives will destroy ignorance from you forever. If you believe, say amen. amen. They probably are words that you know and you've heard, but today God wants to bring them in a new, fashionable, fresh, and transforming way. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. There's something that has been going on in the social media. I think it's more with the ladies. And it has come to Praise Chapel and those who are in social media, uh, especially those here in church. We are working on something about limiting the curbs. As in curbs, I get to realize is that you eat mandazi na chapati, kiasi kidogo. For a long time, I didn't understand why on earth should I avoid mandazi na chapati. Do you know how long I lived without them, only eating them in, on Christmas days? And suddenly I've been set free and liberated by the Spirit of God to eat mandazi and chapati, and now you are telling us to limit the carbs? Seriously? Amen, ladies. I never understood what's all this about carbs. And uh, when I realized it has to do with uh, when you want to watch your weight or want to, uh, to have a healthy body, you have to limit those things. And I said I have no problem with the weight, amen. And therefore, I decided to left the group. And I said I'm going to pray for them that need to work on that. Until I saw a video that was showing, I don't know how true these videos are. They took a queen cake, praise the Lord those who are celebrating their birthdays. <laughs> I'm not against the cake. They are good. They took a queen cake and washed, uh, peeled off the outside cover and washed it over the sink. I don't know how many of you saw that. And finally, after washing all that... Um, wheat, they ended up with something that looked plastic. I don't know how true that is. I'm yet to wash my chapati or my mandazi to see if that will be the end result. But when I saw that, and then they're saying, these are the things that are clogging your colon, they are clogging your intestines, they are blotting your stomach. Wow, I decided to join the group again. And now I began to understand. But I did not believe that video until I heard somebody speak about the difference between eating a lot of ugali 
or chapati versus eating dumas and viazi. Uh, and nini, sweet potatoes. Mesema viazi karibu mtu aseme amen. Not the viazi zile za karai. And I experimented. They say that when you eat a lot of these other food stuff that are processed, you get hungry so fast. And therefore, you keep going back to eat some more. And that's a problem with your weight. But if you eat these other foods that are closer to their natural, you know, their natural original state, they have a way of making you full for long. And they deposit nutrients that your body needs. And therefore, you don't have to keep eating all the time. So, ukipata viazi, ukipita mahamri, ukipita sijui nini unachukua. When I tried that, I love my ugali. Praise the Lord for ugali. Amen. Until I saw this, I experimented. I didn't understand why my husband was saying, Nipati ugali kidogo. But I said amen because the other kidogo of his was going to be mine. <laughs> But for a long time, it's been, I'll eat more vegetables or protein, but ugali kidogo. And praise the Lord, you can see the effects. Open your eyes, oh. <laughs> Amen? But I, I, I experimented, and I saw, I, truly, when you eat those things, you become, when you eat the normal uh, processed food, the ugali, the white ugali, I mean, that has uh, been processed, you get hungry fast. When you eat your part, you think you are full for a long time, but within a short time, after a while, you want more food again. And therefore, for finally, I come to realize that I am getting what? Delivered. Because of the understanding I'm having about nutrition. Amen. And I'm talking to you about nutrition. That's not my topic. I'm just getting somewhere because a time comes in life where things that never used to matter to you begin to matter. Amen? You only have to be a certain stage in life and then you realize eating a lot of chapati and ugali are not adding any more value to you as an individual. But for those who are young, it's okay. But if you can start mapema, the better. Praise the Lord. But that vicious circle that's of ignorance, and uh, finally you get to pay for it later in life, God is delivering some of us. Amen? As a result of that, I have also learned that you can juice your fruits, you can juice your vegetables, things that I used to ignore. Why? Because one day you wake up and you realize things in your body are changing. Time is passing. And as much as you cannot stop growing old, but you can delay the process. Amen? Yes, some of you will understand this later on in life. Praise the Lord. What am I speaking about today? I've come to speak to you about breaking that vicious cycle in your life. Breaking the vicious cycle in your life and possessing your possessions. Amen? Possessing your, which will come as a result of breaking the vicious circle in your life. Because many times, the things that we have ignored over the time, and they keep repeating themselves, and we are getting the same effects over and over again. And you're wondering, when will this weight go away? When will this situation go away? When will things happen this way? But I, I have come to realize that the key to break the vicious circle in your life is not with your neighbor. Amen? It's not with your spouse. Whatever it is, as I was praying to come and share the word, and I said, I asked the Lord, the Holy Spirit, what do we need at Praise Chapel right now? What is the word, Lord, that you'd want me to speak or to share? And the Lord gave me this word, but I realized that this word is more for me than it is for you. I realized that even as I speak today, I'll be speaking more to myself because it's something that I am dealing with. I am, I am um, walking through it and the Holy Spirit is seeing through me and working through me. And I pray that somebody seated in this congregation today that this word will also be yours. Amen? 
Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you, mighty Father, for your word. That as it comes forth, Lord, may it come from your heaven throne room. Use me as a vessel to speak to somebody's heart and break, cause a breakage in some chains of bondage and cycles that have brought pain in our lives. Lord, I pray that you may take you, my, this word that you have given me, Jehovah Father, and plant it in the hearts of your people. Lord, I pray that you may grant me favor before your children, Jehovah God, today. That with an open heart, they will receive it. I am just as a prophet, decreeing and declaring the words that you have given me to your people, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Breaking the vicious circle. Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 17. That one you'll have to remember. Because it's a passage in the Bible that nobody ever, it's a book in the Bible nobody ever really talks about. Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 17. By the way, it's the only verse. It's only chapter 1. Verse 17. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. From where I come from. I can hear my husband saying Obadiah. All right. <laughs> Chapter 1, verse 17. This is what the, the Bible says. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Re let's read that again. This is um, NIV. I'm reading from, I think, New King James Version. Uh, yes, let's read that together. Yes, but on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. What am I talking about? This is a verse that I really used to love so much. Because I came to realize when we talk about Mount Zion, it's the same as talking about in the house of the Lord there shall be deliverance. And I liked it because... I usually used to think or imagine that a time will come, even at Praise Chapel, when the Lord will lift us up so high and we shall experience deliverance after deliverance after deliverance. What picture did I have? The kind of picture I had, I, I could see people lined up and they are falling and the demons are coming out and there's just power in the house and everybody is crying, raising up their hands and they're getting delivered. Because the Bible says in, at Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And for a long time, I believed that that laying of hands and casting out demons, that is the deliverance that we are waiting to happen. Praise God. But I've come to realize something different and notice something different. He said, and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. If the house of Jacob, which represents the children of God, to possess their possession, it means they have possessions that they have not possessed. But when deliverance comes, they shall possess that which they are supposed to possess. Are we together? So in the church, there shall be deliverance. And when you are delivered, we shall experience holiness. And when we, are, we experience the holiness, there are possessions that you do not have today that God will make you possess. Praise God. I looked around and I said, Lord, one of the things that we are struggling in church and even out there, more so in the Christian uh, arena, is vicious circles that have refused to get away. We find people who love the Lord, praise the Lord, serve God, but they are in issues and situations that don't seem to get out of their way. They are not experiencing their breakthrough. These are people who probably are praying and fasting night and day. 
They read their Bible, but they are still caught up in the same problem that they had 23 years ago when they got saved. Where is the problem? Where is the key to my breakthrough? And the Bible says you shall have life and have it in abundance. When you're going through a vicious circle, it robs you of some joy. It robs you of some freedom. You might look very good on the outside. You might be a very powerful preacher. You might be a very loving husband. But there's this one thing that every time you think about it, you are praying and hoping that you'd get rid of that, that you'd get out of your way. That if only that would get out of your way, you would be such a happy person. And as a result, every day, every time, as years go by, because now you have reached a position, where a, a state whereby you have accepted the, the status quo. You know, this is part of me, but I wish it can get out of the way. I was talking to the single ladies, not the single ladies, to a, my group of ladies, and I was asking them, do you know three things that men look for in women. Three things, physical things, that men look for in the women. And uh, most of them could only name maybe one. I'm not going to, stop looking at me. Go Google, because I know you're waiting for me to tell you. <laughs> and they could not name them. And I was telling them, you are single, right? And I, um, you're believing God to get a partner. And yet the very thing that men look for in a woman, you do not know. So if you do not know it, how will you attract the person that you want in your life? The same thing to men. You men, do you know the three things that women look for in men? I hear yes. <laughs> I won't mention them just in case somebody somewhere here is a culprit. <laughs> but it is important when you know these things, and even in your dating cycles, not only even in marriage, and you have these things in place, then you'll be able to keep the attention of the man or the woman. This is just besides other things. Pastor Armani, stop asking questions. <laughs> you, you need to know these things. So that you are in the forefront of what you need in life. It's the same thing as the, when, you, when you want to eat healthy. You must know, why do I need to eat healthy? Why do I need to eat uh, vegetables instead of uh, ugali? What are the nutrients found in skumawiki? Those things that we ignore. Because you don't just get into it because so-and-so is doing it, so-and-so is it. You must know exactly, this one if I eat... If I take a lot of soup, it is going to add to my, is it what, collagen or something like that. You know, I'm so informed these days. Amen, Esther, thank you. So you need to know, you don't just jump into all these things. Why do you need to do what you need to do? Nobody goes to the pharmacist to, 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 the pharmacist to buy medicine and they don't know what medicine they are buying or what is it for. How is it that you say that you it must be dawa for the headache, dawa for the stomach. There has to be specifics. Praise God. You have to be specific. And the desire is that you, in all these things I'm mentioning to you, it's because you want to get from one place or one situation into another situation. If you're single, you're looking for a partner. Amen? If you are unhealthy and you're eating healthy, it's because you want to look healthy and maintain a healthy body. Praise God. If you're sick, you're taking medicine so that you can get what? Well, you are being delivered. Eh? So when we speak of being, there shall be deliverance. I know in your head, something big really, you know, the pictures that came to your head was those ones I gave you of people falling down and demons coming out now and at a peak. You know, those things you see on TV. But simply, what does deliverance mean? It simply means getting it from here to here. Praise God. Can I hear an amen? That is what delivered mean. If I say, please take this hunky and give it to the person behind, somebody will run and take it and deliver it. 
Praise God. Deliver it behind. And the Bible says, in the house of the Lord there shall be deliverance. The question you need to ask yourself is, how will it happen? How does it happen? Because some of us have been prayed for and we have fallen and we've done those gymnastics and we have stood up and two days, two months down the line, we are back to the same thing that was prayed and the hands were laid. So where, how, what is the key? What can we do to get this deliverance so that we may possess our possessions? I told you, those cycles rob you of some of the things that you need. The key to your deliverance is within you. Praise God. Whatever cycle you are going through, the key for that deliverance is in you. I don't know how many of you who are seated here this morning can truth, truthfully say with me that I, I, I thank God that I'm seated here perfectly, but I have issues. I am struggling in my relationship with my husband. My workplace is an issue. I have this cycle, addiction, that I, nobody knows about it, but I'm struggling to overcome. You are probably seated here and you have health issues, lack issues, poverty issues, and so many things, family issues, and the cycle goes on. And you're wondering, how long, Lord? How long will this go on? And we live in a world these days that it's so easy to blame other people for what you're going through. It is so easy. And you say, the reason why I'm behaving the way I'm behaving is because the way my wife treats me. The reason why I'm behaving the way I'm behaving is because of my mother and father. In fact, me, I was blaming my mother for tell, uh, teaching me that chapatis and mandazis were such a delicacy that when I, res I was able to have them when I'm grown up, I was, I'm not ready to release. Because it brought, they brought me up, you know, knowing that those things are so important. Now I'm struggling to get them out of my system. So we live in this um, world where it's so easy to blame your cycle. You know, I come from this family where poverty is part of us. Sisi ni watu wa makelele. Sisi ni watu wa, you know, we are like this. But you're not happy in that situation. And as a result, because of what we are going through, and as Christians, sana sana, we put up a face to show that everything is okay. I can handle it. I am a man. Men are supposed to, you know, to be strong. Like any deep down, you know what you're going through. And many of the time, we have decided to nab these cycles with being busy. You know, you have a situation in your marriage. You and probably your wife are not coping. And therefore, what do you do? You make sure you are so busy that when you come home, you can only eat, maybe watch something, and sleep. I am so busy. Same, together, same as our young people. You come from a home where it's dysfunctional. Kuna kelele and everything. Anything that can keep you away from that environment, baka satatu za usiku. So help me God. We have decided to nab this pain by keeping ourselves busy. Women, you know the situation, the conditions in your home. And I'm not saying the being busy is bad. But we have used this idea of being busy. We are in several chamas to the point by the time we come home, that man will have gone to the fridge and taken the, yesterday's food and eaten so that we do not communicate, just to keep away from what's going on. We are so busy attending prayer meetings and conference that we do not want to handle the issues that we have at home. And sometimes you wonder, why are our bars so filled? Why 
is it that our men are so comfortable doing everything else outside there, and they, when they come home, they are just, you know, they're just too tired, they want to rest. Some of them will even drive around the, you know, just find a place to go so that they don't arrive home early. Because Mama Kali is at home. Mama Kelele is at home. Those ch noisy children are at home. We have decided to nab. Statistics show that one of the highest rates of people who are depressed are found in the church. We are suffering from depression, anxiety disorders, and the cycle continues. And it has, we are coming to a point where we feel like this is normal. So Afro cinema continues after this. Am I speaking to somebody? Or am I only speaking to myself? Because this is what we are going through and we put up a face to look very okay. But the Bible is telling us today that in the house of the Lord there shall be what? Deliverance. I don't know how many of you are saying, Lord, I need to break that cycle. Lord, I need to be delivered. Lord, I need to get this thing out of my way so that I can have life in abundance. Praise the Lord. You wonder why 25 years you have been married and you are dealing with the same problem that you had in the first year of marriage. The same addictions that you have had before you got saved. You got saved at 13 years. Now, 18 years later, that addiction is not going. You wonder why you are sitting in a church like this and you do not need to look far. You have been with these people 10 years. But unajua tu, yule dada. Tabia yake. Na unajua kule onyi ukutana. You don't even need to say it. How come there is no change taking place? What is happening? Why are we not graduating from those things that Lord desires of us? We climb the ladder of success professionally, academically, you know. Even in our prayers, we, you know, we look like we are very prayerful, we are very good at meditation, but you, the same hate, the same anger, the same critical spirit is still in us. What is happening? Why are we not getting out of it? While you can graduate outside there and become a doctor after six years, 23 years, 25 years down the line, you are the same spiritual baby who needs milk that the Bible says, by now you should be taking what? Meat. Why are you able to graduate there and achieve whatever is outside there? But when it comes to spiritual matters, you are remaining a baby. I am remaining a baby. Every year, every time, I want to grow in my prayer life. I want to read my Bible more. I want to study the Bible. Yet you studied me a nurse for years, and you graduated. Praise the Lord. Am I speaking to somebody? We need to be rescued. We need to be delivered to be rescued. The Bible says in Luke 19.43 that a time will come when the devil will hem you and build an embankment on you and on your children. If we continue in this state we are going on, while we know how to nab our pain, there's a generation that is coming up behind us that is looking to you and me, and they're really going to follow in the very full steps that you are, full, you are, you are walking in. And just the way you can nab your pain, they're going to go a notch higher. And they will nab it using drugs. They will nab it using, you know, different characters. We have things that those years we never knew existed. Now we have our children getting into lesbianism, homosexuality, uh, 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 all, all those things, you, you name them, drug addiction, and, you know, things that are higher than what we used to because of the way we have set the pace. A time is coming 
if you do not know the time of your visitation, whereby you can receive this deliverance, the enemy will build an embankment around you. And not only around you, your children and the generations down the line. May that not be our portion today in Jesus' name. Amen? Tell somebody I need my deliver deliverance. When I talk of deliverance, I mean anything that is bounding bondage and will cause you impending danger. You know, when you are in bondage, when you need deliverance in the, in the Bible, is to get out of some form of bondage that is causing you not to, uh, to enjoy everything that God has given you. But the saddest thing is we have been made to believe that deliverance is those things I was telling you. When you talk, in fact, I was asking my kids, when I say deliverance, what comes to your mind? And Amor was very quickly telling me demons. And the other one, was, one who told me, I don't need it. You know, it's not, you know, those are for those, you know, kuna, there's a TV program that comes, there's a channel, I, I don't want to mention names, whereby there's a ministry of deliverance, eh? And every time people are getting delivered, but I want to destroy that thing from your mind today. There's nothing called the ministry of deliverance. Deliverance is simply getting you out of bondage into freedom. Praise God. And the Bible in Luke 4.18 says this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Let's look, see Luke 4.18. In King James Version, please. King James Version. Not New King James, King James. Okay. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. That's what I'm looking for. But in King James, it says to preach deliverance to the captives. To preach deliverance to the captives. Here it says to proclaim. To proclaim, to say, to, you know, to declare. Uh, there's also a version that says it um, to announce release. Is there anywhere that says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to pray? deliverance on the captives. This was Jesus speaking and says we, he was called to preach deliverance. To preach deliverance. To get you from here to there through the word of mouth. To speak it. To speak it to speak it. And that's why I say your deliverance is locked up in the word that you proclaim. Praise God. Your deliverance is not locked up in the spouse who is not treating you well, in your parents who are not understanding you, in the new job that you are looking for so much, in the business or opposition or challenges that you're finding in your business, in the marital status you are. That is not where your breakthrough will come from. Your breakthrough is coming from the words, the words, the words that you're going to speak. It's not the many hours that you're going to pray deliverance. It's not the many hands that are going to be laid on you so that you can be, be, be delivered. Praise God. Any deliverance that comes on you as a result of laying hands is very temporal. It doesn't last. What lasts is what you know the word of God has taught you and you're doing. What is making me transform my way of thinking when it comes to eating right is what I have now learned. And I've seen the pros and cons. Praise the Lord. Deliverance is no big a spiritual word. It's simply getting you from one stage of bondage to the next. And Bishop came up and read Psalms 107, verses 20. Where God says he uses his word, and this is what he said, he sent his word and healed them. He did what? Sent his, 
He did not send prayers. He sent his word and delivered them from their what? Destruction. It is the word that God is, will send that will deliver you. What is the word that you have for the situation that you are going through, for the vicious cycle that you are going through? What is the word that needs, you need, even in your sickness? Sometimes it's called for you to go into the word of God and decree the word that the word, uh, that the Lord God has said over your body. And you shall speak to yourself and say, by his stripes I am healed. Praise God. It is the word that will deliver you. In Exodus 7 verses 1, the Israelites, when they were in bondage in Egypt, and the Bible says they, uh, God heard their cry. And when God heard their cry, he did not send an army, an army to go pray and lay hands on them. He sent a man, Moses. And in Exodus chapter 1, verses 7, chapter 7, verses 1 says, Exodus 7, verses 1, please. It says this, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. I have made you, Moses, a God to Pharaoh. And Aaron, your brother, shall be a prophet. What is God saying here? Moses had complained, I cannot speak. And so God says, you will go as my representative. But I will speak the word to you. But because you cannot speak, Aaron will prophesy. Aaron will take that word and tell it to the people. The Bible says a time has come that the spirit of the Lord will be upon you and you shall prophesy. Prophesying is nothing other than taking the word of God and speaking it forth. Praise God. So when a prophet is coming, that's not the time that you feel like, hey, there's a prophet coming to praise chapel or there's a prophet coming to... Twende to Kasikize. Ignorance. That prophet is coming to declare the word of God so that it can deliver you. But it will only deliver you when you take that which works for you. Praise the Lord. So Moses was going there as a God to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, you can take Pharaoh as now in quotes, the one who had bondage, the demon in their life. And you, the Holy Spirit, we can say this, Moses is the Holy Spirit. And then you are Aaron. So what you're going to speak to yourself under the vicious circle, under the bondage that you have, you are going to take the word the Spirit of God will reveal to you and speak over your situation because the Spirit of God takes from God and reveals it to you. And when you take it, you speak it to that relationship that has trained you for 23 years. You speak it over that child that has suddenly turned to be a lesbian or a, a homosexual or a drug addict or a drunkard. Because what does God say about this? God sent his word through Moses to deliver the Israelites. The same thing we find in Jesus. When Jesus um, was at the, after baptism, he defeated the devil by saying three times, it is written. It is written. Every time the demon came, he didn't say, let me pray about it. It is the word that was in there, and he spoke it forth. Lazarus, when Lazarus was dead, Jesus came, and did Jesus hold a prayer meeting? Did Jesus have a fasting? He spoke and said, Lazarus, come forth. He called Lazarus forth because he knew of the word of God that is able to bring life in every dead situation. Buana asifiwe. Speaking the word of God, Elijah was told to speak to what? The dry bones. Praise God. The dry bones. So that they can have life. How many of us have been praying for years to be delivered from the addiction of washing soap operas? Praise the Lord. How many have been praying for years to be delivered from the habit of drinking? Let's be real. What about the spirit of lust? Skati aipiti mbeleako. Praise God. Eh? How many?
many times you are hoping that maybe now that you're having a fasting for three days, praise God. Amen. Praise God. There's a fasting coming. This is your time. I am going to pray this situation out. Prayer is important, but your deliverance shall come out of the words that you speak. Amen. So instead of preaching deliverance, we have been taught to pray to be delivered. Please get it from me today. Amen. It is the word you know that will deliver you. Let's give the Lord a hand. I don't know if you are clapping and you know why you are clapping, but God will reveal to you as you go on. So what is in this word very quickly as I finish? He sent his word. What is in the word? That is where the power is. Praise God. Number one, we see in John 6, verse 63. This is what Jesus says. It is the spirit who gives life and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. One of the things that you find in the word is the spirit of God. Jesus is saying the words that I'm speaking to you, as I speak to you right now, somebody is receiving life. Somebody is receiving the spirit of God. When we say the word of God has a spirit of God, the spirit of God is his presence. Praise the Lord. So number one, when you're thinking of deliverance and speaking the word of God in that situation, know that as you speak that word, you are releasing, you are bringing down the presence of God into your situation. And God who is above and beyond and unlimited, and unlimited is there any situation he cannot handle? Is there any situation he cannot handle? The Bible says when the enemy shall come in as a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. When you go through situations and they are tough and the cycles look like I cannot break it, it is time to invoke the spirit of God through his word because that's the spirit that will raise up a standard over the situation that you are going through. Praise the Lord. So the, number one, the, spirit, the word of God carries his presence. His presence. It is very easy. I've experienced this sometimes. People go and say something and say, Mrs. T has said. And truly, I never said it. But the person who will be told Mrs. T said it will act so fast. Because that pres the name Mrs. T carries some authority that will cause that work that this person needs to be done to be done. Praise God. And therefore, when you invoke the word of God in your situation, you are bringing God's presence. And that situation will have to bow because of the name of God in it. So number one, it has the spirit of God in it. The, the, the verse also says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. John 6, 63. It is a spirit that quickens the flesh, profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Praise the Lord. There's power. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Amen. We all know that. But we talk very loosely, don't we? It is because of your talk that has caused somebody today or not be in the choir, maybe. It's because of your talk that has caused your... You, you, you know, to get warm food when you arrive late in the house. It's because of your talk that has caused somebody not... You know, the things you talk, they are life. They are affecting your life somehow. It is time that you realize that you're speaking life. Praise God. Those words are creating what you desire. Every time the clock ticks, your life is being taken away from you. Did you know that? Right now, your life is being aged away from you. Time is very important, isn't it? And time spells life. What are you doing with the life that you have? Are you enjoying your life in a, you know, the way God wants you to enjoy? Or you are waiting that a time will come that you shall have it in full and have it in abundance? Is there a timeline? Because very soon, you never know, you might wake up and realize you're in the presence of the Lord. Every time the clock ticks, your life is aging away from you. It is better to make sure that the life you have now, not tomorrow, is full and complete and being enjoyed 
in the Lord, not giving it out to, uh, to, to the enemy. And that is why you cannot continue in the vicious circle that is bringing you pain. God is giving you a tool that you can use, praise the Lord, to break those uh, chains that are holding you down. He used his word to create. Words are creative. God's word is creative. When you speak it over your situation, you can create a newness, something new out of the old. Praise the Lord. Use your word to create something that is good. Maybe over the years you've used it to create negative things. It is time to bring goodness into your life. Praise the Lord. And therefore we've seen that the word of God has spirit and the word of God has life. Thirdly, the word of God has power. Isaiah 55 verses 11 so says this, So shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing that for which I send it. How many of you want prosperity? There are prosperities that are temporary and there are prosperity that are physical. Both are good, but don't miss out the eternal ones for the temporary ones. Praise the Lord. When you speak your word, the word of God into your situation, the Bible says it shall prosper in that for which I sent it. You want prosperity in your marriage, in your relationship, in your business? Speak the word. There is power in that word. Amen? So as we see that this is what will bring deliverance, when we know that what is in these doors called the word of God. Number four, the word of God is fire, fire. Amen? Fire. As I'm speaking now, somebody's getting burnt. Oh my. I know because the word of God, I am not speaking my words, I'm speaking God's word. And whoever has an open heart shall receive the word of God in them. In Jeremiah 23, 28, it says, is not my word like fire? Jeremiah 23, 28. Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. I decree in Jesus' name that as I speak the word of God, and as you speak the word of God, anything else that is not supposed to be in your life shall turn to straws. That the word of God, when it comes, it shall burn those things and only ashes will remain. Praise the Lord. When you speak to your situation, know that there's a fire that is being released. Amen? And whatever you are speaking, if it is to be destroyed, it shall die in Jesus' name. Are you hearing me? The word of God is fire. You know, sometimes we say fire, but we don't know what we are saying. But today you know. Amen? Today you know. And it also says that it's like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. Is there a heart that is too hard that cannot hear the word of God? Is there a situation that cannot be turned when you speak the word of God? Is there a life that cannot be changed? And in fact, above the, um, the whole verse says, if you speak my word faithfully, apply faith, fire, hammer, it's a cutter. You know, we are struggling so much fighting with each other, trying to change characters around us. Yet all we need is to go back to the creator and speak the word of God. Amen? So it will penetrate, it will break, it disconnects, it cuts, and there's nothing that cannot be turned by the word of God. Number six, the word of God is a sword. Ephesians 6, 17. Praise God. It is a sword. It cuts. When you invoke the word of God in your deliverance, whatever it is, it will cut from all angles. Amen? The word of God is a what? A sword. Literally, think of it as a sword. It's a hammer and a sword. And the Bible says it's like a two-edged sword, eh? Itakata kilam mahali. What is it that has surrounded you that you're finding it so hard that is not getting out of you? Invoke the sword of God. Amen? 
It also says the word of God is the light. Whenever the word of God is brought, it dispels every darkness. As I speak to your heart this morning, and I pray, Lord, that every ignorance that brings darkness in you as a result of the, issue, the, 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 the message of deliverance, may the light of God shine that you may know the truth that pertains to your deliverance now in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise God. It is so easy to sit in a sermon or a, and be taught very, you know, I've come to realize it's so easy to sit and listen to someone and after that you have nothing to carry with you to implement on a daily basis. Terry told us he comes to give you what? Eh? Desserts. Nanajua mulikula dessert. This is real food. Ugali na skuma. It has nutrients. Dessert ni keki. It is plastic, but it's also good ni tamu. Praise God. I am here to deliver desserts, to deliver real food to you. And therefore, may the word of God, as you invoke it, invoke it in your circumstance, bring light. And finally, we are told that if you know the truth of the word of God, it shall do what? How many people are longing to be free? In whatever situation it is, you're saying, Lord, this is me. I just want freedom from that vicious circle, from that vicious pain, from that curse. I just want to be free. It is the truth of the word of God. And I'll ask you, in what areas do you need to break? You need to break that are persistence in your life. And you're asking God for a breakthrough. As you think about those areas in your life, you only need to invoke the word of God. And that is the cure that you need for your deliverance. Buona asifiwe. Praise God. And from now onwards, I pray that you will be able to take these keys in your hand, these tools, and instead of rushing and running to every conference around the town, you will invoke the word of God and bring deliverance to yourself. As I end, I want to end with this story that probably some of you know. And the, what I need to ask you, yes, this what I've talked to you seem like very normal. I hear it every day. But the plea, I would plead with you, are you ready to give God a chance? Are you ready to give the word of God to work for this deliverance to occur? To break the chains of fear, of lust, of anger. Are you ready to give the Lord a chance? A story is told of an atheist Baba who was talking to a pastor. And the Baba asked the pastor, this Baba is an atheist, does not believe in God. The Baba asked the pastor, if there's a loving God, how can he allow poverty, war, and suffering in this world? And just at that moment, a disheveled man crossed the street and the Baba the pastor said, you are a Baba, and you claim to be a good one. How can you allow a man, that man, go so unkept and so unshaven? He never gave me a chance, the Baba replied. And to which the pastor said, exactly. Men are the way they are because they have rejected God. They have rejected the truth of the word of God. While we are pointing fingers and looking for things outside there, the key to your deliverance is in your hand. It's within you and is in your possession. Many of us are walking around carrying a complimentary gift of food to the stores that we need to 
get those, that food for free. But instead of opening the complimentary gift God has given you, you are working hard to achieve that which you have been given so freely. Others have to buy miracles. Others have to buy, you, you, you know, you sow a seed so that you can receive your healing. That shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. The word of God is at your fingertip. It's your complimentary voucher. Use it to create your desired end. Stop blaming others. Be the object of God's subject. Buana asifiwe. Be the object of God's subject. Realize that your situation, God is using you as an object. And there's a subject that he's bringing forth. There's a deliverance that when you are delivered from, God receives the glory. And somebody sees and says, I want the God that you are serving. Look to the situation and circumstances in your life. Not as um, some things that are happening to you alone and they're not happening to your neighbor. Take them and say, Lord, what can I learn from this? And as God sets you free and you receive your deliverance, you are going to rise up and be the women and men. God is calling to change the generation that is coming before you. Can we rise up on your feet as Bishop comes to the altar? Thank you so much. Amen. I want the choir to lead us in this, the song that comes from the words of David, creating me a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. As you sing that song prayerfully, may everything that needs to break in your life be broken in Jesus' name. Pray, sing it prayerfully. Let God be God. Let his word do the magical thing that needs to happen in your life. Creating me a clean heart. Creating me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me created me created me a clean heart oh God and renew and renew a right spirit within me Within me, cast me not away from your presence, O Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me that joy of your salvation. 
renew a right spirit within me. Within. 